Welcome to Sessions from Oblivion on 2XM and we have lots of additional material on the RTE 2XM website. You have been listening to Jeff Nettle and I am delighted to have Glenn here, the main man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Andrew? I'm doing yeah, good. Okay. Uh, architecture. What is that about? Ah, well, it's a single that came out in November 22, um, so you've all heard it now. Um, I think it's a look back um, at a darker time in my life. Um, kind of 90s Dublin, grey, rainy. I remember. Heartbreak. Yeah, we knew each other then, did we? We did, yeah. A little bit. Um, in a sense, it's musically a look back at that kind of pre-rave era, in a sense. Um, there's hints of the, the Sisters of Mercy, the Smiths, that sort of thing, but still kind of modern. And, I, you know, I like a lot of mo newer bands, whether it's like a Franz Ferdinand vibe, new rock influence in there as well. Mm. Um, it's kind of light and dark. There's that kind of upfront dancey rhythm, a good hard beat. It's, it's danceable, but the lyrics are kind of the antithesis, antithesis of that. Right. Um, yeah, so it's, a, it's definitely a look into my life then, 
there's some heartbreak and loneliness and that type of thing. And uh, it's kind of interesting for me to look back on that because it's not how I feel now. No, <laughs> that's because you went off to New York and you ended up working with OREM, Dolores O'Riordan, Andy Rourke and other people. How, how, how did that happen? Um, well, the OREM one happened in Dublin. Oh. And, you know, I was a kid, a friend of the family. Was Michael got, Stipe? No, was their producer, <laughs> nice fella. And... Uh, they got me a, a couple hours in the studio and it worked out that I have some programming and some sampling and I, on one of their albums, you know, I'm quoted as a session musician, I think, on the record. So yeah. there was that. And then, um, what was it? Oh, yes, later on, working with Dolores and that. Yeah. Um, that came about, um, I, I've been in engineering and programming, producing stuff for a long time. Um, Andy Rourke from the Smiths and Ole, his, his uh, writing partner at the time, were in a band called Jetlag. And when they were coming up, they remixed a band I was in called The Glass. Then they remixed some of my solo stuff as DJ Wool. Um, and we kind of stayed in touch. Um, and then when they were working Dolores and developing the Dark album, they were looking for an engineer, someone to come in um, and work the tracks. And uh, yeah, they gave me a call. Uh, Dolores gave me a call and... and can, can I ask you something? Uh, recording, playing, singing, mixing, DJing, um, what, what's best? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I think what's best is working, you know. Oh, right. what, what's best is like being allowed to make music, being allowed to do it, you yeah. know, having some space to make music and have a, some sort of career um, and the privilege of that, you know, and that's probably why it's so diverse is that you know, I'll take an opportunity and run with it when I get one. If it's in the music industry, my skills are you know, pretty wide. I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, it's interesting to me that with sort of a, a tech background, um, that there's not a huge amount of tech in, in death metal. It's, it's pretty meat and potatoes, bass, drums and guitar. <laughs> Raucous, post-punk. Yeah, I mean, that was something I probably brought into this new act because of my time as an engineer, seeing bands on stage overdoing it with tech. Mm. Um, and um, I suppose when I thought about making it a live act, I was like, okay, in the beginning, when you start a band, you're gonna be supporting acts, you're gonna be going into small rooms. You know, you don't wanna be annoying the engineer with 50 inputs, you wanna just walk on stage, plug in and do the song. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to keep that simple. Um, and, and that's what we've done. And Is that works. because you were once the mixing engineer for the Californian uh, State Symphony, was it? Yeah, I worked, I worked as an engineer for, for um, the California State Symphony at Santa Rosa for uh, a few years. Uh, definitely, yeah. I mean, we were talking earlier. I've, I've definitely, I was um, um, specifically involved with doing pop shows. So... Um, electric bands, whether it was a, a mariachi band or a Beatles cover band in front of an orchestra. Wow. So we were talking about, you know, something like that could have over 70 inputs, you know, three days okay. of running cables under stairs and carpets and, and whatnot. So I definitely know what it's like to run something very technical. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Hundreds of miles of cables. Absolutely. That's miles my and idea miles. of yeah. hell. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was hellish. I mean, at the same time, again, I felt really privileged to do it and I felt really lucky to be there um, when I was doing it. It was, really, it was really interesting and fun and I met a lot of people and maestros cool. and, you know, Good. union musicians and whatnot. Nice one. Okay, uh, every episode we have a guest and today it's Emma Langford. Last night, hoping you'd find me yourself before light. Dreams they don't come to me willingly now. Darkness, no comfort. Silence, no shroud. I have to reason with. Reason allows These eyes grow weary now Tracing the lines Counting the cracks in a grey plaster sky 
dreams don't entice them to rest for a while. Dreams are the locked box kept deep in the mind. Some fear what hides behind their own closed eyes. I've been sowing acorns in my densely woven mind. I've been growing trees from memories for us to climb And when we reach the top, what will we see? When we climb them all, what will we dream? Oh, will we dream? so much thank you what is that song called that is called sewing mm. acorns spelled sewing acorns. with an o like planting as opposed to oh. sewing like stitching right yeah. right had to clarify okay. that quite a few times yeah do you hold that <laughs> sure thank you yeah and what's it about oof it's about a number of things it was inspired by a beautiful mosaic at the irish world academy of music and dance where oh. myself and alec met at okay. university um well we actually met at the college bar really but we studied <laughs> we studied there and um there's a mosaic that tells the story of the hazelnuts of wisdom and the goddess Shona and all these incredible things and that right. sort of set off a chain reaction in my mind. Yes. So I wrote this song after three weeks of working on my thesis, sleep deprivation, insomnia, fever dreams and these images came into my head and this song sort of just happened. Who, who decided that you should wear the best Doc Martens in the world <laughs> and he should wear no shoes? I mean, this has been an ordeal for me. Alec wears flip-flops year-round. There's no flip-flops. Oh, there's flip flip-flops year-round. Yeah. Oh, they're there. They're hiding. Okay. Um, yeah. Where I've been trying to get a pair of Doc Martens that fit me properly for a very long time and these are the closest I've gotten. So. I think they're fantastic. Thank you very Big much. Fan of Cheers. Um, what is on the cards for uh, 2023? It's going to be a really exciting year. We're heading to Folk Alliance in Kansas City wow. um, in February, so that's going to be amazing. Going to get a chance to meet some brilliant industry people, and we're going to be stars. Um, and then we're <laughs> heading to Germany uh, in kind of spring, summer time for three weeks as well on tour. So, yeah, great, lots of fun great. stuff. Okay, well, uh, thanks for coming down. We Thank do you appreciate for having it. us. Yeah. Cheers. 
Every episode has a section called Tips and Tricks, where I take a Zoom call with an industry professional. And this episode, it's May Kay. Hello, May Kay, and welcome to Sessions from Oblivion. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so this is Tips and Tricks. What would your first tip or trick be for young talent? Okay, well, it, just since we're off the back of that, release the music. Don't sit on it. It's really not that big a deal. In fact, the longer you wait to release something, the longer it's going to be till you get to move on. It's this, I, I try most of the time, unless I'm referring to an actual train journey, I try to avoid using the word journey at all. But it is, it's your whole life. Your whole life is not this one album or this one track. Get it this out one there. Gig. Yeah, get it out there. And you know, people say things like, this is your one shot or this is your, there are so many shots. Um, and you should probably have some sort of marketing strategy. Just putting it out there on its own probably isn't indeed. enough. Yeah, it's such, it's so true. And it's something I wish, uh, actually, but there are probably people, there are probably people that did tell me this, but I wish I'd been told more um, when we started out that it is a business. You are starting your own business when you decide to be in a band or decide to be an artist. Um, and a great guy called Rev Moose, um, who's a marketing music guy based in New York, who spoke at Ireland Music Week, um, made a great point that there's, there's no other business in the world where someone would leave a steady job and a steady income without having a business plan, without knowing how much money you have, without knowing how much money you need, without knowing what it is that you really want out of it. Um, so when someone says make a plan and treat it like a business, no one is saying you're only in it for the money or, or the creativity isn't important. It's all the plan is there so you can be as creatively free as possible. What okay. is your second bit of advice? Um, I would say that the thing that like really goes without saying, because it, it, it same goes for just life is that you need to be nice to people. That sounds really simple, especially if the person listening to this or people listening to this are like, yeah, I am nice. But if someone goes out of their way to do something for you, thank them. If someone's nice to you, thank them. If someone does something extra special that probably is um, outside of the remit they were given, acknowledge that because there's creative people all around you and, and what you mightn't see as the really artistic, creative part of a project. You know, the set designer, if you're doing a TV slot um, or at a festival or something, you know, someone has really put some time into making that um, a nice place to work. Uh, but there is a very thin line between being grateful, showing gratitude and networking with doing stuff that is not necessary you know it's not it's not polite for you to say oh I'll do that for free because I've worked with them before that's just that's not necessary um letting people kind of uh underpay you or you know not give you the hospitality that you deserve for a show and you're like oh I'm just going to let that slide because I don't want to fall out with anyone. That is not necessary. You also don't need to come in all guns blazing, but there are like baseline things that you deserve as a person working. So forget about your profile and forget about how many followers you have on anything. Um, you as someone working, you deserve certain things um, and you're not doing anybody any favors. You're doing a disservice to your peers by not demanding those things. And again, if you're not sure what to charge for something, there are people to ask. Ask First Music Contact um, about, you know, fees, advice, and what you should be asking for. Um, if you get an opportunity where someone asks you basically to play for free and you think it's really good for your profile, that's your business. Yeah. Um, but just make sure that you're not underselling yourself. It's very rare that someone can't compensate you for your expenses even. And in fact, if they can't, they can't really afford to put on the show they're putting on because I promise you nobody else is working for free. What is your final tip or trick? This is something that I still have to remind myself to do all the time. Um, and it's just to remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. and to always come back to that. And that's not wishy-washy. Well, um, why, why do you do what you do, make it? Because I love it. Right. Uh, because, I've, and I feel incredibly lucky. I honestly, sometimes between other voices and experiences I've had with Fight Like Apes and the Galaxy, 
and loads of other things I've done, I sometimes I'm like, I cannot believe I get to do this. I cannot believe mm. I get to communicate with the world in this way and interact with the world in this way. But I, um, I may have mentioned earlier, I'm a bit of a fan, and um, <laughs> you're able to do it because you're quite brilliant. <laughs> if you were Thank shit, you. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do it. They wouldn't let me do it. Nobody would care. <laughs> uh, this is true. Thank you. Um, your sense of your own worth and how you value yourself has to come from yourself. If you read good reviews and they make you think you're good, then the bad reviews are going to make you think you're bad. And then you're totally at the whim of some asshole who is or, having a bad day or a good day. Or just read the good ones. May Kay, it has been a delight and a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for taking the time. And best of luck with Thank the album. You. Thank you. That was May Kay from, uh, well, former Fight Like Apes, who uh, was telling us, uh, get your music out there. Don't forget, this is a business. Be nice to everybody. But she also talked about humour in music. And her, her band, Fight Like Apes, have a song called Accidental Wrong Hole. Good Lord. And the, uh, <laughs> the chorus is, you're a clumsy lover. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you think of, of comedy in, in rock and roll? I think it's really important. Comedy is important in all aspects of life, isn't it? Yeah. Especially yeah. in music. You yes. Know, you can't be taking yourself too seriously. No, you yeah. couldn't be around for as long as you and I are if you couldn't <laughs> have, have a laugh at, at, no, at ourselves. You, you absolutely could not. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, we're going to play out with uh, your final song, Boat Race. What, Speaking it? of humour. Yeah. <laughs> Boat Race, I mean, it's a, definitely a follow-up to our first single. It's, it's going to be on our, um, on our debut EP coming out spring. Um, and uh, it's, it's the tale of a girl hitting me, or several girls hitting me in my time. No kidding? Yeah, believe it or not. Why? Did you ask them to? No, no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> um, maybe I was not so well behaved. Oh, right. um, No, I mean, it, again, it's, it's, it's humorous. It's a joke. Yeah. Um, it's about the energy of the song. It's, you know, you can hear it. There's like some Ramones. There's a lot of 80s American punk bands in there, which were great for humor. You know, there's some Ja Wobble kind of Henry Rollins kind of vibe going yeah. on. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it's several tales, like all of my songs. Uh, they're all based on reality. So um, this is just a humorous take on the end of relationships that I've had in the past. Okay. And, uh, and, consequences of such right well look it's been a great pleasure talking to you and even greater thanks. pleasure listening to you play thanks Andrew. thanks for coming out uh, we're going to play out with death metal boat race Don't do hate, but I put you in your place